Thank you for joining us. We're going to continue now talking about the Garden of Eden and what it was like. On seminar part 2B here, we're going to talk about the cavemen and quite a few other topics. The Bible says in Genesis 1, God would said, I'm going to make man in his own image. If we're made in the image of God, why do we teach the kids? Grandpa was an ape. Now, evolution teaches we're getting better and someday we're going to become God. The facts are, we're getting worse. Things are falling apart. We now have an incredible genetic load. We are mentally and physically deficient compared to Adam and Eve. Things are not getting better, but we all teach the kids in the textbooks, this is Grandpa. What's the truth about the cavemen? Is it possible for an ape-like creature to turn to a human? Well, it depends what you mean by caveman, okay? There are people today who live in caves, okay? We don't call them half ape, half human. There's the world's most wanted caveman right there, Osama bin Laden. There's a former caveman. <clears throat> I think someone's trying to make a monkey out of us. Was your ancestor an ape-like creature? I don't think so. Let's talk about a few of the so-called cavemen. We could spend hours on this topic, but we got more to cover here. Uh, Nebraska man was used for years as evidence for evolution. All they found for Nebraska man was one tooth. That is the entire Nebraska man right there. One tooth. Then they built an entire man from that one tooth and later made him a wife. Now you have to really be good to know what his wife looks like from his tooth. Okay, but these are professionals. Don't question them, okay? They know what they're talking about. Later they found out the tooth actually came from a pig. There's the real Nebraska man right there. How about Piltdown Man, named after the gravel pit it was found in in Piltdown, England. Somebody took a human skull and an ape's jaw, they filed them down and fooled everybody. In 1912, they discovered the Piltdown Man. It was in the New York Times. Darwin theory proved true from the Piltdown Man. It was going to be used in 1925 at the Scopes Monkey Trial as part of the evidence for evolution. But the judge said, the question is not, is there evidence for evolution? The question is, did he violate the law of teaching? So he was found guilty of breaking the law. The teacher was John T. Scopes down here in Dayton, Tennessee. But Piltdown Man was a hoax. Somebody had taken an ape's jawbone and a human skull, broke the uh, TMJs off, made them fit together, and fooled everybody, filed the teeth down. For 40 years, it was in the textbooks as proof for evolution. It was a fraud, exposed as a fraud. 1953. Neanderthal man is still in your textbooks, used in your town here in Knoxville, Tennessee. But it's been proven years ago it cannot possibly be a missing link. Long story about the Neander Valley, named after Joachim Neander, that wrote the song in the songbook, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. Great godly man. Well, back in 1856, they found a skeleton petrified, a man petrified, in this valley called the Neander Valley, and they named it Neanderthal man. The back was bent over. Well, apes walk on four legs and man walks on two, so when the Darwin's theory became popular, they resurrected the Neanderthal man and said, oh, wow, maybe he's slowly evolving, he's coming up. Well, they've known from the very beginning it was an old man with arthritis who's slowly going down. He's not coming up at all. <laughs> he's headed down. But they still keep him in the textbooks. About 300 Neanderthals have been found. Their brains are bigger than ours. Their bone structure was incredibly strong. They said they had so many muscles that the average Neanderthal could probably pick up the average NFL linebacker and fling him over the goalpost. Phenomenal strength in the Neanderthals. They gave the same skull to nine different artists and said, what did he look like in life? They got nine different answers. They said, what would you like him to look like? We're artists, you know, we can make him, you want him ape-like or human-like? You tell us what you want, we'll do it. Jack Cuazzo, uh, a friend of mine from New Jersey has been a dentist for 32 years. He came and spoke at our conference uh, a few weeks ago at the boot camp we had <clears throat> in Pensacola. He studied the actual Neanderthal skulls in Europe. He said, these Neanderthals are just perfectly normal humans that are living to really great age. See, before the flood came, the people lived to be 900. After the flood, lifespans dropped off to 400, and then 200, and then 100. But that's still a long time to live. And it's a simple fact, the bones of your eyebrow ridge never stop growing. So if you could live to be three or four hundred years old, your eyebrow ridge would stick way out. People today that use their jaws a lot, like the Aborigines in Australia are always using their jaws as a vice, they don't carry a toolbox with them. Their eyebrow ridge sticks out really far because of the chewing muscles. 
It pulls on the bone. The Neanderthals are perfectly normal human that are living to be two or three hundred years old. That's all they are. Their brain's bigger than ours. They're not subhuman at all. They're just really old human. There's an aborigine on the far left over there. See the eyebrow ridge sticking out? That's from chewing or using your jaw muscles a lot. There are a lot of different shapes of head. You could line up the folks in Knoxville, Tennessee and prove evolution just by the shape of the skull <laughs> and drive downtown. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. Here's Cro-Magnon man, still used in the textbooks, yet it's perfectly normal human. Why on earth is that considered a missing link? They've got one in there called um, Homo sapien is modern man. He's listed as Cro-Magnon. It's not modern, it's not a missing link at all. One they've got in there now is called Australopithecus afarensis. That was proven wrong in 18, I mean in 1973. 30 years ago, proven wrong. Why are they keeping that in the textbooks as evidence for evolution? They've got Australopithecus africanus, or afarensis, better known as Lucy. How many have ever heard of Lucy before? Donald Johansson found Lucy in 1974, Ethiopia. He had gone there with a grant to look for missing links. Somebody gave him some money, said, here, go find a missing link. If you don't find one, no more money. Two weeks before his grant money expired, he discovered Lucy. Highly motivated, I suspect. And that would be a suspect, by the way, in a court of law, you know. Lucy was three feet tall. It was obviously a chimpanzee of some kind. Now, the bones of the skull were crushed thoroughly. Could not tell anything about the skull. But when they put it together for your kid's textbook, they can make it half human, half ape. They named it Lucy because they were listening to the song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Very popular back then, which, by the way, has the initials LSD, which they must have been on when they found this thing. But uh, the knee joint that was labeled Lucy's knee in National Pornographic, uh, Geographic was actually found a mile and a half away and 200 feet deeper. But National Geographic labeled it Lucy's knee. It's not Lucy's knee. It's a mile and a half away, for heaven's sake, okay? There's quite a controversy about that knee joint still. But this, the knee joint is the best evidence they have that Lucy was becoming a human. Because an ape has the lower and upper leg that are in a straight line with each other. A human leg goes up to your knee and angles off to the side because your hips are wider than your knees. Lucy's knee angled off to the side, the femur angled. And Donald said, see, that proves she's becoming a human. No, any monkey that climbs trees has an angled femur. What he found was a tree climbing monkey. It's not proof it's becoming a human. He said, well, the bones are slightly bigger than a regular ape. Well, that's true. It doesn't prove it's becoming a human. The bones of a Clydesdale are slightly bigger than a regular horse. It doesn't prove it's becoming a truck, for heaven's sake, okay? What he found was a heavy-duty chimpanzee, and probably the pre-flood chimpanzees and everything was probably more heavy-duty. If they're living longer, much healthier, that's all he found. There are big horses and little horses today, by the way. St. Louis Zoo put human feet on their Lucy display. <coughs> Not one foot bone or hand bone was found. Not one. Every other australopithecine that's been found has curled toes. Professor Menton at Washington University said, the statue is a complete misrepresentation. That's a big fancy word for lie. I prefer, I prefer smaller words. It's a lie. The zoo director said, zoo officials have no plans to knuckle under. We cannot be updating every exhibit based on every new piece of evidence. We look at the overall exhibit and the impression it creates, and we think this impression it creates is correct. Uh, Bruce, are you telling me you would lie to kids coming through your zoo just to get an impression across to them that evolution is true? You mean your theory is more important than the facts? It's exactly correct. They will lie to the kids going through these science centers and zoos to make them believe this evolution theory. And there are lies in the textbooks, like 60 of them. We cover that on video.